Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor gives you sports betting tips. This is Wednesday, April 24th, Major League Baseball. Uh, recording here uh, late night. Uh, many of you, you can hear it in my voice, and you talk a little sick with the allergies and whatnot. Uh, fell asleep on Tuesday night at like 7 o'clock, and, uh, and then woke up at, at midnight and just couldn't go back to sleep. You know, let's, let's, let's do a baseball show here. And we've been toying with some different formats um, as I've been consulting, you know, with, uh, you know, with different people. I think the main thing to uh, communicate is what, if you've been here any time of this, you know, we're always looking to improve, always looking to get better, always looking to, to, to make changes that are good, uh, long-term beneficial for, for, for you, the viewer, the better. Um, and so you can try a little bit of a different format today and see how it goes. Um, I, I do appreciate feedback. Um, also do appreciate kindness, right? We're, we're, we're putting forth a lot of effort here and, and providing a lot of content. And so, um, you know, if you're with us on Dub Club and you're supporting us over there, uh, thank you so much for that. And uh, again, hopefully I'm giving you enough information, enough data, enough summaries and everything that to make it uh, worth your while. And, and hopefully having a great time over there. Um, and if you're not just with us on YouTube, uh, you're getting a lot of information free. So I really just appreciate the kindness and the comments uh, about any feedback, what you like, uh, what you don't like. Uh, but again, the, the kindness goes a long way. So, so I really do appreciate that. Uh, looking at yesterday, first fives continue to carry the day for us. Uh, doing really well. Full game sides into great on Tuesday, but still kind of holding their own totals, still struggling on full game totals. Uh, but the play of the day, uh, extra credit picks split again, continuing our run of not losing both in the same day. The parlay of the day won and has gotten us into the slight positive there as, uh, uh, you know, I think we're getting on a little bit of a run here, starting to really see baseball pretty well. The parlay of the day, I think, is one like four of the last five. Uh, the the extra, the first five free pick. Of course, the first five has done great. Even the play of the day, though, even with the setback here uh, on Tuesday, I think, is one like you know five of seven or something like that. So going in the right direction. Hopefully, we can keep that rolling. Uh, but remember, you can get all of those first five picks. You can get the play of the day. Uh, Summaries, more information, Discord chat, all sorts of goodies over on Dub Club. Appreciate your support if you're over there. Uh, again, if you're not, check it out. Uh, link in the show description gets you a free trial to start you off with that QR code there on the screen can do it as well. Quick reminders, if you're looking for information about the model, the rules that go in this community, picswiththeprofessor.com slash new will get you that. We are projecting an average game. One game is unknown. There's always weird things that happen in one-offs um and, and and we just whether it goes our way or not we just kind of shrug on those and just say we're not focused on the one game we're focused on the big picture uh and the in the long-term trend uh and that's what makes us price sensitive because it's about the long-term trend because if we take the same situation the same set of games and we're winning them at minus 120 versus minus 130. The minus 120s could be what gets profit, whereas the minus 130s wouldn't. So that's why we always talk about price and why that matters. We're not really focused today on this show on price, and, and, and you can see if, see if uh, we like that, see, see how it goes, see, see if it makes a lot of sense uh, before you hopefully getting good information from it. But as always, take what you like and leave the rest. We don't want you to pick anything that you are uncomfortable with. If you like the show, that helps us out. Otherwise, we'll get to it here. Starting off in the afternoon with a 115 first pitch Diamondbacks and the Cardinals. Uh, Cardinals, you know, got it done for us on uh, Monday and then a wild game on Tuesday where the Diamondbacks just scored uh, approximately a floppy billion runs. They'll throw Jordan Montgomery. Uh, the Diamondbacks will against his a former team, the Cardinals. A little bit of a revenge game here. Montgomery in his one start was very okay the underlying metrics kind of mad but but overall solid pitcher one start not going to make too much of it still think he's a good pitcher kyle gibson on the other hand for the uh cardinals 
one of the many veterans the Cardinals have seemingly brought in uh, to help solidify their rotation has not had a good go of it this year. The model is not very high on him. So the Diamondbacks are going to have an edge there at starting pitcher. Um, they do have an edge on offense as well. The only area that the Cardinals will have the edge is in the bullpen, which if the Diamondbacks were 14 runs or, or, or what, what, 10 runs in the first five, the bullpen <laughs> won't really matter. So that's kind of the thing to keep an eye on here. That sort of game does reset the bullpens for whatever it's worth. Model says the Diamondbacks win this 53% of the time. The correct price should be minus 114 the a grade price is basically anything even money i do not think you're going to see anything near that for the diamondbacks unfortunately uh, right now uh, there doesn't look to be a huge edge on this game uh, any one direction or the other but the projected total as you can see they're on screen impacted by the fact that the weather is going to make this a little bit more pitcher friendly than an average game in St. Louis, mid 60s, with the wind blowing in at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Mets and Giants, 3:45 p.m. Uh, Shamania and Blake Snell. Uh, Snell has struggled in his first two starts with regards to the number of earned runs allowed, but we've been long talking about earned runs, maybe not being the best predictor uh, going forward. His underlying metrics are still very solid, still a very solid pitcher. Uh, I, I don't think I'm concerned about him. I don't think there's anything really to be worried about. I think I think people like narratives. I think the human mind likes narratives. Uh, that's how we evolved from thousands of years of storytelling. And so we, we like stories and we like to be able to say, oh, Blake Snell didn't have a spring training and that's why he's struggling to start off the year. Or Blake Snell's historically been a slow star. You know, those are great narratives and everything and they make for a fun story, but I don't really think the data backs that up. Uh, because again, if you're using ERA as your measure of predictor, you are using a tool that is not suited for the job. Uh, when you look at, for instance, his XFIP is 369 on the season, and that's not bad at all. Uh, would he prefer it better than that? Sure. But even at his 85 grade, Snell's only projecting to go forward at about a four level. So his XFIP's actually been better this year than what I think he is. So, or, or what the model thinks he is, I should be clear on that, divide my thoughts from, from, uh, mathematical computation. So, so I, I don't think there's, uh, there's really just no evidence. There's no data that, that really supports uh, Snell struggling early on in the season. Uh, it's a cute narrative and it, 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 the data points, I think that, that are using argument for that. I, I just don't think are accurate. I don't think they're very good. Uh, so I have no problem black backing Snell. Should the price be right? Manaya is a guy I've talked about. I, I like him. He's done really well in three of his four starts. The other start was a disaster, but a pair of lefties here in this game against two reasonable offenses. Just a note the ball's going to fly a little bit better there in San Francisco in the day as a general principle is all those West coast ballparks can play a little bit pitcher friendly, uh, and, and to varying degrees, depending on which park you're talking about, get a little bit more hitter friendly in the day, uh, probably less applies to the two in Los Angeles, but more to the other three on the West coast. Uh, so just kind of a, a note there, obviously the bullpen we've talked about for the Mets is really good, but if you have a situation like what happened on Tuesday, where Logan Webb dominates the game, the bullpen advantage for the Mets doesn't really come into play because they were uh, behind the eight ball all game long. Um, this one's a game that we're projecting at 7.5 runs for the full game. You can see the first five projected total is four. Uh, even though the ball will fly a little bit better there during the day, uh, it's still a fairly chilly day in April. We, we're just, you know not seeing the you know mid 60s to 70 degree type day we can see in San Francisco. And those day games later on in the year will provide a little bit more of a friendly hitter confine than uh, what you'll have here uh, on, on Wednesday. Orioles and the Angels, the late afternoon start here, 4.07 p.m., the last of the afternoon games here on Wednesday. Mid-60s for this one, wind will be blowing out, so slightly cooler, but wind blowing up will probably offset and make this play pretty standard in Anaheim. Dean Krimmer and Tyler Anderson. Uh, Krimmer, just kind of mad underlying metrics, depending on whether you look at FIP or XFIP or, or XCRA or Sierra or any other number of different events that you could look at. Kind of a mixed bag on him. Respectable, not amazing. But the, the note here that I have on Tyler Anderson is that he might be a good pitcher to fade um, because of the fact that he might be being um, – you know, mispriced based off his 142 ERA. His underlying metrics are not kind whatsoever. Uh, FIP in the high fours, XFIP in the low fives. And so uh, he's a guy that that the ERA, people might say, oh, the, the Angels here have an edge starting pitcher. And the model would tell us that's not the case. 
bullpen wise, we do like the Orioles bullpen. The Orioles offense is fantastic. They didn't win on Tuesday. Obviously, you're not going to win every single game. We still think the Orioles should be favored in this one and that they went about uh, 59% of the time at the current uh, A grade threshold of minus 128. Looks like you might be able to find a price better than that right now. So the Orioles seem like a smart investment. First five total. Uh, in the five and a half range, expecting about 10 runs. A lot of offense expected in this one. The Orioles offense is really good. The Angels bullpen isn't very good. And Tyler Anderson on the mound, uh, likely to give up some runs. Tonight, games, Red Sox and the Guardians, a chilly night in Cleveland. Low 40s start up or 30s to close. One way blowing in. Uh, this is going to play very, very pitch friendly, as you will see when we get to the projected total in a minute, which is going to help both pitchers who do not grade out very well at all. Cooper Criswell for the Red Sox. Um, only made one start so far. It was very meh, a little bit below average uh, in that one. Carrasco, his results have been okay. His FIPs, okay. His X FIPs a little high. He's gotten pretty lucky with uh, things like home run rate. To be fair, I think he'll continue that luck into this game because it's going to be really difficult to hit a home run in these conditions, in this park, this weather. Uh, not to say it can't be done, but I mean, you're going to have to really crush a ball. Uh, to get a home run. Otherwise, what would be a home run in most parks on a night like Wednesday here in Cleveland is going to be a, a, probably a routine fly ball, to be completely honest. Maybe maybe slightly deep, but it's going to be really pitcher-friendly, and the bullpens are going to help that out. The other thing that helps here for both these starting pitchers, and I think you've probably seen it uh, more so with Carrasco, and I think you will with Chris Wells as the season goes on, on, assuming these bullpens stay in this form, that these bullpens have enough depth that the teams aren't asking them to go very deep. Um, if they go, you know, five innings great uh, if they go more than that perfect but if not neither one of these guys is going to be asked to go deep because there's good arms behind him to come in and that helps the pitcher out a little bit not feeling like he has to go you know seven innings or something like that uh guardians of course have a huge edge on offense their offense is very respectable for the first time in quite a while it appears to be whereas the red sox offense is really dinged up at this point southern says the guardians win this 58 percent of the time should be favored by a price of minus 141 in the A-grade threshold of minus 127. Probably not quite there yet, but that's the angle that you would look at based off the current prices. Projected total 7.2. This is a game where uh, under 7.5 would be pretty hard to pass up. Very similar to the game that we talked about on Tuesday night with the Giants where the weather was um, the, the weather and starting pitching combination made a, a total that should have been at 7 if not lower. Um, this one I think is one that should be set at 7. So I'm not sure where it'll be. Obviously shop around like always to find the best price but under 7.5 at reasonable odds might be a pretty good investment. If you don't have an account yet, BetUS is a great place to be able to shop around 125% bonus on your first ever three deposits. Bet US, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. Phillies and the Reds, 6.40 p.m. Eastern. Uh, upper 50s to start, low 50s to close. Wouldn't be blowing out. Uh, so that'll kind of offset the cooler temperature. So not a bad night for hitters here in this one. Uh, really debated hard on Tuesday whether we go we should go with the Phillies or the over. Decided for the official show to go Phillies uh, rather than the over. That was the wrong call. Uh, in hindsight, the uh, Phillies defense definitely let them down in that one, and uh, uh, runs were plentiful and should have just stuck with the over. But uh, you know that's that's kind of the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, right? Uh, Spencer Turnbull versus Nick Lodolo. Turnbull's a guy I've talked about this season. I really like backing. He's been fantastic. Not as good as that 123 ERA, but his underlying metrics uh, are fantastic. If he continues to pitch like this, he's going to skyrocket through this. To the starting pitcher ratings, uh, FIP below three, XFIP in the low threes. I mean, really have to be pleased with him if you're a Phillies fan so far. Not sure he can keep up that's what he's done so far, but so far it's been great. And you like the trajectory that he's going on. Nick Lodolo for the Reds, very similar story. A guy that um, is good. And, and, and part of where the Reds, uh, I think, have opened, I've talked about I'm not really high on this Reds team because all of their pieces, other than their starting pitchers, aren't good. They're really going to be relying on those starting pitchers. Um, and, and they've got some upside. A lot of them do. You've seen Montas, you know, struggled and then getting injured. Uh, that's a problem. And I think the problem with the Reds, of course, is that they're just they're so paper thin. 
and that they only have so much talent at starting pitcher. But Nick Lodolo is one of those talents, a very good pitcher. And, it, you know, if he pitches well, Hunter Green comes along, whatever, that's the hope for the Reds to compete in the centrals. So the starting pitchers carry him. And, and, and again, Nick Lodolo in his two starts has done just that. Um, I, just like Trump, not as good as that ERA, ERA is below one. Uh, but the underlying metrics so far in his two starts are great. He, he's been a good pitcher before, showing two pitchers that you like here. Uh, that you have no reason to fade either one of those guys. You obviously do have a reason to fade the Reds relievers, uh, but the Phillies, uh, you know, as, as you saw on Tuesday night, desperately need um, Bryce Harper back, it seems like. But their offense just isn't that good. It's it's, it's a surprise. Um, when you look at the names uh, in that offense, right, and maybe, maybe it's that, you know, a guy like Nick Castellanos has not been a, a good hitter. Uh, of late but when you when you look at you know harper and turner and uh real muto and and you know you think this is going to be an offense that's going to be towards the top of baseball and they're not even uh, you know in the middle they're below average uh, and so that's of course the concern for the phillies they do have some starting pitching of course uh you know sanchez and um uh, Suarez and, and Nola are all very good. Turnbulls could, and of course, Zach Wheeler, one of the best pitchers in baseball. So, uh, a very similar to story to the Reds, uh, with the exception of their their bullpen is much better. Uh, Model says this is a coin toss game that the edge that the Phillies have on offense uh, and bullpen is offset by the location of this game. Maybe they should be slight favorites, but not by much. Um, so, this game's priced fairly well yeah, as of right now. Projection total would be 8.8 first five. Uh, 4.4 is the average number of expected runs. Brewers and the Pirates are on 50 degrees at first pitch for this one, mid 40s to finish. Wind be blowing out at 10 to 15 miles an hour, so a fairly chilly night in Pittsburgh. But the wind blowing out was going to help at least offset some of those cooler temperatures. Uh, Bryce Wilson is the guy that is listed right now. Uh, it looks like they could go with Peralta. Uh, but they need a pitcher for Thursday still. And so uh, the, the speculation seems like Peralta might go with Thursday and that Wilson comes in here on uh, on Wednesday. There's no need, obviously, to rush a guy like Peralta who has had some injury issues uh, in the past. Wilson has done fairly fairly respectable so far this year. He, he's made one start pitched a little bit out of the pen. Uh, reasonable ERA XFIP. His FIP's a little bit high, but, um, you know, for what you're expecting from him, not bad. And a really good Brewers bullpen that, as you mentioned, has carried them while their offense has struggled. Quinn Priester for the uh, Pirates making one start so far and got lit up. XFIP, though, was at least encouraging. Uh, so a, a below average pitcher at this point, and many prospects coming up fall into that boat. Um, the biggest thing with both of these teams is just their offenses continue to struggle. And I mentioned it before, and I'll continue to say it. They will turn around. It, it, it's just the way it's going to be. You just never know when it's going to happen. It, it could happen here. On Wednesday night, it may happen in a week. It may, it may happen in a month. The Pirates had a long stretch last year where you kept thinking it would turn around, uh, where they were just like historically inept, it seemed like. Um, and that's the direction that both of these offenses are going, especially after a nice little start offensively for both of these teams. Um, and so that's just, you know, kind of something to keep an eye on there, of course, is that knowing that it will turn around, but knowing that it just it hasn't yet. <laughs> it's, it's continued to look, uh, you know, uh, frustrating if you're a fan of either one of those teams uh you know, for the offense, both of them made up with the pitching though. And that's what should make this a coin toss game. And that the starters are at least respectable and could have success against struggling offenses. And the relievers in this game should uh, carry on that success projecting um, a little bit under nine runs in this one, maybe more runs earlier in the game than later, because the reliever should be an improvement over the starting pitcher and a 50, 50 coin toss game. And of course the A grid thresholds there listed on the screen. Dodgers and the Nats, upper 60s to start, low 60s to close. Wind will be in or across. Slightly chilly night will make for uh, kind of offsetting the slightly hitter from the nature of this ballpark. Landon Knack for the Dodgers, very respectable in his first outing. Uh, projects to be pretty average. Jake Irvin for the Nats has looked really good in his four starts, still not getting a very good grade. Uh, the model's a little bit, you know, hesitant to come around on him based off of what he's seen on him. Uh, in previous seasons, but so far, if he continues to look like this, that grade will not stay that low. He will not remain ranked, you know, number 225. Uh, so this is a situation where your take on this game and, and how you feel about it, I think a lot boils down uh, to Jake Irvin. I think we, it's kind of weird because he's more the veteran and, and Max, obviously the, the, the rookie who's pitched one time in the major leagues ever, but 
I think at this point I have a pretty good handle on Knack. Maybe it's because I had him in Dynasty, you know, for a little while, but he's a fairly reasonable prospect, going to be a fairly decent pitcher. He's not going to come up and be a superstar from day one, but I think he's going to be just acceptable. He's going to be okay. Whereas Jay Gervin, I think, weirdly enough, has the larger error bars in that Coming into the season, we had no expectations whatsoever for him to be even respectable, even decent. But so far, he's not been that. He's been better than that by a lot. And it's not a mirage. The ERA's low, the FIP's low, the XFIP's low, all of them the low threes. And so I think your opinion on this game has to do with how do you feel about the four starts of Jake Irvin? Do you think that this is real? He's going to continue to have that sort of success or the that success version against this Dodgers offense, which is incredible. Uh, or are you thinking that, you know, that's a mirage and, uh, you know, in, in reality, um, you know, it, it's, it's not going to be, um, not going to be that good. And so that's the, the thing to keep in mind there, um, it, as, as you're handicapping this one, the model says the Dodgers should win this about 62% of the time and that the, uh, a grade threshold for it would be minus 145. And so you're obviously not going to get that. Um, on the Dodgers, but, uh, you know, the run line play on the Dodgers was, uh, the, the lean that the model gave on Tuesday, uh, might be a way to look on this one as well. If you're interested in fading Jake Irvin, if you think that Jake Irvin's the real deal, uh, maybe a first five of the Nats might make a lot of sense. So a couple of different ways to play that in a game that the model projects to get over nine runs. So I'm not sure what the total will be, but if you can get a total eight and a half or nine it might be looking over, didn't get over on Tuesday, uh, but that doesn't mean that it can't happen on Wednesday. Tiger and the Rays uh, continue to be just flustered by both of these teams. Uh, Jack Flaherty for the Tigers has looked a lot better than his ERA. And so there's definitely some uh, upside there that might be hidden underneath that ERA. Uh, Tyler Alexander, and my goodness, the fact that the the Tyler Andersons and Tyler Alexanders are pitching on the same day, and I already get those guys confused. Is not good for my my brain. Um, Tyler Alexander uh, for the Rays uh, been very below average, and so that should help the struggling Tigers offense. Again, I don't really know what to make of either one of these teams. The model says the race should be slight favorites, but it's hard to really feel confident in anything about this race team. So it's one of those things where I'm not saying that we. Um, I shouldn't be taking the raise. It's just going to be hard to pull the trigger unless the value is just through the roof on them. Uh, at this point, I feel like it's probably Tigers or pass. Uh, but at the current prices I'm seeing, I'm not really going to take the Tigers either. Uh, and again, that the model projects have eight and a half runs. It's a pretty high number for that ballpark. And I think it illustrates the, uh, the fact that the model doesn't have a lot of faith in Tyler Anderson, doesn't have a lot of faith uh, in the uh, raise relievers and the Tigers relievers, maybe not quite as good as, uh, we would have hoped coming into the season if you're a Tigers fan. A's and the Yankees are on 60 degrees to start, mid 50s to close. Wind will be blowing out or across. Definitely one to keep an eye on and check back in closer. If the wind's blowing out, it's going to make this park play fairly normal. Uh, if the wind's blowing across, it's going to be another pitcher friendly night there in New York. Joe Boyle and Clark Schmidt. Boyle has been better than that ERA, it's actually been pretty average. Overall, so far this year, the model projects him to be below average because historically he has not been, um, you know, last year's numbers weren't very promising either, but don't be fooled by that ERA. He's not that bad of a pitcher. He's not good either, but he's not, you know, 723 ERA bad. Uh, Clark Schmidt, 315 ERA, and the underlying metrics support that so far. So he's another guy that if he continues to pitch like this, his rating will continue uh, to improve. Uh, so another question you have to ask yourself is, is this real for, for Clark Schmidt? Do you think he's actually as good as he's looked in his four starts? We're at the point of the season where this is a very reasonable question to ask after one or two. You know, it's very easy to say, hey, don't overreact to one or two starts. When you get to seven, eight, nine, you start saying, yeah, at this point, you can't really ignore that. We're at the point here for, you know, five starts for these guys. It's it's tough to say. It could be a small single size, you know, a little bit, um, but it could be that, that some of these guys are making some some leaps and improvements and, and added pitches and who knows what, right? Depending on how close you follow some of these guys. Um, so so Clark Schmidt definitely the big question mark in this game and could really impact uh, how you um, how you handicap it. The A's couldn't quite get it done for us on Tuesday as they lost by one run, but hung in there. And I think the same thing holds here today. I think the um, Yankees are priced too high uh, to play. And that doesn't mean they won't win. They did win uh, on Tuesday, but the price is very high. And that means the run line price is very high too. There's very 
rarely a massive difference in those markets. And so it is that the risk definitely isn't there uh, for the war that you're getting on the Yankees because they're, they're probably a little bit overpriced uh, against an ace team that's still playing, you know, not terrible, I guess is the best you could put it. Um, and so that doesn't mean there's enough value on the ace to take them, but I kind of feel about this game like I did about the one on Monday where um, I'm not really sure there's great value in it. That game, the A's did turn out to win. Um, they could easily win this one because, you know, one out of three things happen all the time in baseball, but um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not expecting it to happen, but also that doesn't mean that the price on the Yankees is, is worth a play either. Uh, so right now this would be a game that I'm uh, would be passing on, but as always, you know, the first five market may, Provide some value. Uh, and again, the difference between the first five and the full game market on this one, boys, and what we've been talking about all week with the A's is that how much do we believe in that bullpen? And it's continued to look really good. And how much, you know, every day, like I said, every day, it seems like the 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 A's offensive rating takes a little, tiny bit of a hit and the bullpen rating gets a little bit better. And if you think that's going to continue, maybe the full game market makes more sense for the A's. But if you're skeptical about that, maybe the first five does. So kind of just depending on how you see things might determine which market uh, you would be looking at, but uh, kind of a classic case here where it does seem like the Yankees are a little bit uh, overpriced. And again, the model's projecting about nine runs in. Marlins and the Braves. Braves are massive favorites in this one. Of course, they should be. Ronaldo Lopez finally does get the start, and everything I said about him before holds true here. The model loves him. Um, XFIP a little bit higher, so maybe not quite, um, you know, as good as that, uh, not just the 0.5 year, but even the low two FIP. Uh, but still, I think an underrated pitcher uh, against Island is number 24, and I don't think many people would put him in their top 25. Uh, but so far, so good for him. Uh, Sixto Sanchez has made a few relief appearances, has not looked very good, does not project well at all. I mean, this is a massive starting pitcher discrepancy. It's a massive offensive discrepancy. It's it's a pretty massive bullpen discrepancy, but it doesn't really show up on screen when you look at the metric just because all the other discrepancies are so big. But, I mean, this is all Braves here. There's really no reason to think that the Marlins going to Braves or pass, uh, I guess is what I would try to say. And then you just got to figure out, is the price worth um, your investment? You know, it, do, do, you, do you go money line? Do you go the minus one? Do you go the run line? And that's, of course, a personal preference. As I mentioned many times, I like the minus one market um, because I just don't. Uh, you know, care for the for the run line for the home team. Uh, and again, it's not that it's a terrible play. You are getting a little bit of a boost, uh, the payout from that versus if they were the road team, because everybody knows the same things. Well, it's harder to cover a, a run line as a home team, but I just don't personally like it. So I kind of like the minus one market. However you want to play it, uh, it does seem like there's probably some value on the Braves simply because this price should be higher. I think there's a little bit of hesitancy to make this number bigger um, in the market than, than it is right now for a couple different reasons. Number one, again, I think that the Ronaldo Lopez is being uh, undervalued. And so I want to take advantage of that. But number two, I think we tend to think that big prices like this should only happen later on in the season when, when things have, um, you know, teams are given up and you've sold off pieces and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, while the Marlins aren't as bad as the White Sox and they're not as bad as the Rockies, um, this offense isn't good, and it's only, you know, quote unquote respectable you know, because of the fact that we're comparing it to the White Sox and the Rockies. But otherwise, this offense isn't very good, and I don't really have a lot of faith in any of the pitchers the Marlins will have. Uh, the Marlins season went one out of four times, and I think that's just a reminder that weird things happen in sports. Um, but uh, <laughs> while we should not be surprised if a one out of four of it happens, I would still be surprised if the Marlins won because there's just not really a lot of reason uh, to think that. And the current price, starting with a one, uh, blows my mind because to me, um, I, I don't know why you know anybody would play them unless the price got a, a lot higher than it is. There is a point where it makes sense to play the Marlins. The price, the value would be there, but I just don't see it being anywhere near where it is now. Uh, Protecting about nine runs in this game. Weather-wise, will be fairly nice in Atlanta, around seven degrees to start mid-60s to close. Slight breeze blowing out. And for one of the first, one of the few nights in April, uh, this might actually play as a hitter-friendly ballpark. Um, not extremely hitter-friendly, not like it will be in the summer, but relative to what we've seen in April, we've had cooler temperatures and breezes blowing in. And saying uh, the unders have made sense here, uh, and we, we've done really well with the unders here uh, so far in the series. Um, but the weather may be shifting a little bit more, so a little bit warmer 
here on Wednesday night. So I'm not saying that I wouldn't take the under, but the under may not be quite the slam dunk it was these first few nights of the series as the weather's uh, warming up just a little bit there in Atlanta for Wednesday night. Blue Jays and the Royals are on 70 degrees to start mid 60s to close. Wind will be blowing in. That will make the park play a little bit less hitter friendly than normal, but still be a hitter friendly ballpark. Yeriel Rodriguez and Alec Marsh. Rodriguez is a guy that uh, I, I like to back. I think he's a very solid pitcher uh, coming up here. Uh, like everything I've seen from him, uh, really no reason to think that he cannot continue to have success. Uh, against the Royals offense that uh, probably a little bit of smoke and mirrors early on uh, as we've seen them kind of cool down as of late. And I'm not saying the offense is bad, but I'm not, just, I'm not quite sure they were as good as that incredible start that they had early. Um, you know, obviously a guy like Bobby Wood Jr. is, uh, you know, a beast to deal with, but I think Rodriguez is a good enough pitcher that he can uh, at least minimize the damage that the Royals offense uh, can do. Alec Marsh for the Royals has been fantastic. And if you're a Royals fan, you have to be very pleased with what he's done. Uh, underlying metrics, maybe not quite as good as that 322 ERA, but both these pitchers are actually uh, pretty respectable. Two guys that you may not have heard of, two guys you may not know much about, but two pitchers that are actually pretty decent. Obviously, the Blue Jays offense has an edge here, but being on the road, the model says this is a, another pretty coin toshy type game. Uh, and so, again, the thresholds there for the A-grade price are listed. Uh, if anything, right now, it does seem like the Royals uh, might be uh, the smarter pick based off the current price, uh, but uh, the price right now not good enough to get the A-grade A grade threshold. Uh, so we'll see about maybe an official pick. We'll look at the first five markets, of course, in the morning. and have all that out for everybody on Dub Club. And again, the model uh, says if you can get a nine, maybe look at the over on the over to hit force um, here on uh, Tuesday night. But that, again, doesn't mean you can't hit on Wednesday. White Sox and the Twins. Uh, this White Sox offense... Uh, and not a nice offensive team. A little bit better with scoring a few runs against the Twins uh, on Tuesday, but one you still can't have a lot of faith in. I, I think the biggest thing here is that Garrett Crochet, while he's given up some runs, the interline metrics are still very promising. He's still, I think, their best starting pitcher on their team. And that XFIP of 283 against the Twins offense that can struggle is a, a thing where I'm looking at this saying we have to just be a little bit cautious backing the Twins. If we do back the Twins, we definitely want to do it in the full game market. And hope that Crochet only goes four or five innings. Um, he's had a, he's had trouble getting a little bit deeper in a couple of the starts. But if Crochet against this Twins offense is able to get six or seven innings, that price in the Twins is a little bit scary right now. Uh, I'm not saying I'm running the back the White Sox by any stretch of the imagination, but we just have to remember Crochet is a, is, is a pretty good pitcher. Don't be deceived by that ERA. Uh, thankfully for the twins, uh, Joe Ryan's been uh, back to his old old self where he's been really good. 82 great. Uh, XFIP and FIP both in the twos. I have to be really impressed with what you've seen from him. And of course, uh, should have success against a terrible White Sox offense. Uh, this is one where the total market might be appealing. The model says this total should be priced around seven. And personally, I'd put it at seven as well uh, if it was me, just because. Um, I don't really have faith in either one of these offenses. Both these pitchers are pretty good. And so I put it at seven and say, hey, seven's pretty likely and, and dare you to go over or under. And if you ask me to go to, to seven and a half, even though the model says 7.3, it's only a small edge. I, I think it, it's kind of under or pass um, here on this one. So uh, pitcher friendly night, cooler temperatures, slight breeze blowing in, great pitching, questionable offense. The only problem with the under is going to be the relief pitchers. So another way you might want to look at, of course, is the first five under. Again, all depends on the number and the price. First five under three and a half, a whole lot less exciting than first four, first five under four, assuming that your odds are reasonable. Astros and the Cubs, uh, my goodness, this Astros team faded them again here on Tuesday. Got another winner with that one. And, and I don't know, as an Astros fan, uh, it, it, it's confusing. You know, the team's made, I don't know, 100 straight ACLs, as it seems like. And um, they just can't figure it out. Uh, offensively, they still grade out fairly well uh, against righties, getting better against lefties. But, you know, it, it's just not happening. The offense just isn't there. The bullpen just isn't there. When one's there, the other one's not. Um, I don't really expect good things with Spencer Arrigetti. I've talked about this before. I don't really, I'm not really high on him. I don't think he's ready yet. He's not as bad as that ERA, but I, I'm not really sure he's going to uh, amount to much more than just a back end of the rotation guy anyway. And when you have a back end of the rotation guy who's your ninth best starting pitcher, you know, he still needs some work to get to that potential. So at this point, you know, he, he should be in triple A. But when the answers have yet again now five starting pitchers, five big league caliber starting pitchers in the IL, what are you going to do? 
And so that's been obviously part of the problem for the Astros, not the whole problem, but part of it. And I think it's going to really manifest itself again here uh, against the Cubs. James, Jameson Tyon looked really good in his first year. Underlying metrics, maybe not quite as good as that ERA, but still a respectable pitcher. The question here is going to be about Tyon. Uh, how good can he do against this Astros offense? Uh, if he can keep them in check, the Cubs stand a good chance to win this game because they should be able to do some damage on Arrieta. The issue is going to be the weather right now looks to be very pitcher friendly. So while you have a, a recipe for success for offense, Astros offense is still good. I know it's been up and down. Don't have any faith in Arrieta. Don't really have a lot of faith in either one of these bullpens. Low 40s and a 10 mile an hour wind in at Wrigley Field really counteracts that. So you have a, a battle of two forces here on the total. Mother's predicting 8.5. A morning update on the weather will be key on this one because that wind shifting around that can really change things a lot. But uh, to me, just a fascinating game because if the weather, if it was a summer day, wind blowing out, you could talk me into going over 12 and a half in this game well, with these pitchers, uh, and, you know, and, and relievers, offenses, et cetera, you know, it, it sets up for a high scoring game. But if you had better pitching, uh, you know, you could talk me into under six and a half because this weather is going to be very difficult for the offenses to succeed. The offenses are going to have to succeed via walks and, you know, singles, you know, bloop singles, you know, stuff like that, because even doubles are going to become hard to come by in here uh, unless you're, you know, just getting them perfectly down the line, which is very difficult to do. Right. And it's not something you can plan on doing. So um, again, a very interesting battle with regards to how many runs are scored with regards to the game model says it's a coin toss uh, 51% to the Astros so slightly in their favor. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not dying to take this Astros team. It's bottom line. Really, ever, uh, especially with Arietti on the mound, I'm, I'm not. I'm not dying to back them. Mariners and the Rangers, nice night in Arlington. Could open the roof if they feel like it. Bryce Miller and John Gray Miller has been fantastic so far this year. Underlying metrics, uh, maybe not quite as good, but but still supporting him. Uh, a guy I have no problem backing. Jonathan Gray looking. Uh, like it, like his very solid self. He's had a little bit of ups and downs in his career, but so far so good for him this season uh, as both his, as all three of his ERA, FIP, and XFIP are all in the threes. Uh, Mariners will have a little bit of an edge to bullpen. Rangers have a little bit of an edge in the offense. This is a game where the Mariners came through for us on Tuesday. The Rangers know our favor here on Wednesday, and they should be favored uh, mainly because the pitching – uh, starting pitching mostly cancels out. The Rangers offensive edge will last for nine innings, while the Mariners bullpen edge will only last for four, question mark. Depends, of course, how long the starters go. Uh, and then the Rangers home field edge will last all game. And so the Rangers, uh, that's things in their favor on losses. They went 54% of the time. Um, current price about a nickel away from that A grade play, so not quite there yet. But we were on the two, the Mariners, uh, thankfully on Tuesday, um, probably not going to be able to back them. On Wednesday at the current prices. Padres and the Rockies uh, wrapping us up here uh, on, on Wednesday slate. Couldn't quite get to the under. Uh, too many runs early and then the runs died down. Uh, so, so missed that by the hook. Uh, but I think you saw what I was concerned about. The weird things sometimes happen, of course. And so uh, if you took my advice on the winning line probably the day yesterday and you you know, you just stuck to the two and didn't get greedy. You got about, about an even money winner. And if you got greedy and tried to throw all the big favorites in, including the Padres, uh, they were the one that cost you. And that's the thing about this, trying to figure out which ones are more likely to go sideways. And uh, the Padres, not that it's the Padres, it's the Rockies, right? They're, they're not good, but weird things can happen at Coors Field. Weird things happen there with regards to the fact the Rockies play better than usual. As much as that's not been true this year, um, that's a small sample size. We still expect that to continue. We still also expect their offense to struggle. Don't have a starting pitcher on this one yet for the Rockies. Fangraphs is lifting Ty Block, who's been a guy who's pitched a little bit for them in, in the past in a spot start situation. Um, a guy who did the same thing for the Giants, I believe, uh, a few years before that. Uh, has only pitched one inning in the bullpen. Very meh. Um, Matt Waldron. You know, the, the model's not very high on him, that 114 grade, but so far in his four starts, he hasn't been terrible. Um, he's been a, probably a little bit better than that ERA. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised the model's so down on him. Um, he should have success against the Rockies. Of course, the issue is can he have success in, 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 at the altitude, of course, field? That's the question any pitcher has. 
um, going into it. So no line available right now. We'll see what the Rockies do starting pitchers. They've got a couple guys injured. Uh, but the model would say the Padres only win this 52% of the time. Um, that's, of course, if it's uh, tie block going. I don't know who starts for them. But the Padres, of course, have a huge edge on offense. Um, and they have an edge at a reliever. But if they don't have an edge starting pitcher, the Rockies' home foot advantage, again, is larger than any other home foot advantage in baseball. And so that's where you know you have to hesitate fading the Rockies in Denver. I love fading them on the road. Um, you really have to pick your spots fading them uh, in Denver. And that was the, the fear I had. Uh, on Tuesday, and that came to fruition there. So uh, big question mark, though, on this one with regards to the starting pitcher. And so, of course, the update for that. And all the picks, uh, first five full game, we'll figure all that stuff out in the morning. All that will be available to everybody on Dub Club. If you're not there yet, check it out. Link in the description gets you a free trial. Otherwise, though, thanks for watching. Best of luck. And remember, you can eat your betting money, but please don't bet your eating money.